Digital signal processing, and for us audiophiles and musicians, audio signal processing is a fascinating area of study. In it encompasses all of the audio effects that we know and love, including filters, delays, reverbs, modulators, dynamic processors like compressors and limiters, non-linear processors like distortion, saturation, phase vocoders, pitch shifters, and all of the others in between that I've failed to mention. And what many books and resources on these topics fail to mention is that the mathematics is complex. Not necessarily complicated, but a fundamental understanding of complex numbers, complex algebra is required to understand a wide variety of textbooks related to the discussion of DSP. And once you get into them, you quickly realize that it doesn't just end there. You need to understand complex sinusoids, Z transforms and Fourier transforms, which convert discrete and or continuous time complex signals into their frequency domain representation, and a healthy understanding of trigonometry, vector geometry, and calculus. And that's when we choose to close the book and fend off an eternal sense of dread and insecurity. I've been there. For a lot of people, getting into DSP has a high barrier for entry. And don't get me wrong, I'm not dissing any of the books for being extremely pedantic. It can be quite complicated if you get into the nitty gritty. But from a distance, it doesn't have to be. Intuitively understanding these subjects, irrespective of the math, is a more surefire way of building foundational understanding and interest in the subject. So, this entire series is dedicated to the discussion of one of the core areas of DSP and an effect that's widely used in every realm of audio processing. Filters. We'll approach filtering with as little complex mathematics as possible and rather rely on an analytical approach of simulation and visualizations to get an intimate understanding of filters, how they work, and how they behave. This section is heavily borrowed from the amazing work put together by Will Perkle in his book Designing Audio Effect Plugins in C++. If you haven't already checked it out, I encourage you to do so. So, let's see what we'll be covering in this series. We'll start with what a filter is, and the terminology is used to describe the characteristics of a filter. We'll look at a couple of ways of analyzing the result or the response of the filter by looking at the frequency and phase response graphs. Then, we'll take a quick stab at the different types of input signals that we may want to experiment with. These aren't going to be audio signals as such, but really simple test signals that we can step through sample by sample and understand how a filter might process them. We'll look at the simple building blocks of any filter design, including delays, amps, and summing mixers, and view them as structural black boxes that we can arrange in a flow diagram. We'll look at the simplest filter topology, a first-order feed-forward low-pass filter. We'll run the test signals through this theoretical filter, going over the signal step by step, sample by sample, to see how the filter processes the test signal. Through this, we'll discover the fundamental principle on how a filter attenuates or boosts certain frequencies in a signal. We'll look at why this filter is called a finite impulse response filter, or an FIR filter, and how FIR filters can maintain linear phase characteristics. After that, we'll look at a simple modification of this topology to get a first-order feedback filter, and we'll do the same analysis with this. We'll see how an introduction of a feedback loop into the topology it can create a starkly different response. And we'll see why this type of filter is called an infinite impulse response filter, or an IIR filter. Finally, we'll take a look at a few code examples in Python, which will help us solidify these concepts, and a Juice plugin which implements these simple designs and try them out on some real-world audio signals. This will be a lot of fun, since we'll be building a filter algorithm in C++ with barely any mathematics at its core. Because of this, we don't use conventional filter inputs like cutoff frequency, bandwidth, or Q, or gain controls. All we expose is a couple of coefficients that we can control, and uh, it's fun to see how changing them will result in really unpredictable behavior in the filter response, and ponder upon why it behaves the way it does. So, with that introduction out of the way, let's get started. <laughs> 